Hello and welcome to part three of a series of three videos on buying and owning a holiday let property in the region of Valencia and specifically in the province of Alicante. These videos were made in June 2020 and are information not legal advice. If you're looking at the future date, you will need to check for updates as the laws do change from time to time. In part one and two, I covered actually obtaining your certificate of compatibility from the town hall and then your license from the Office of Tourism. So now you finally have your license, you've got a legal holiday let, but it doesn't end there. There are other things you need to do to make yourself fully legal. The first is you need to buy your official plaque. It's big, it's red, it's shiny vinyl, it's ugly, but you have to have it. You can get it from hardware stores, there's a, a template and they will uh, use that template to enter your license number, uh, which is individual to your house and, and print you one off. You also need to display a form that says that you have the official complaints form. So it's actually an official notice that you have to display, but that's easy to download and print off. The forms have to be purchased. Um, if you're unsure where to go for that, we can send you links, but often the easiest thing to do if you're not in the UK, if you're in the UK rather than in Spain at the time when you need to buy them, is ask your solicitor to get them for you. Your license number must be included in all forms of advertising, whether that be on one of the numerous websites, and there are good and bad, and some of the biggest ones actually are not the best ones to advertise on. Um, I have reasons for saying that, which I would explain in person, but ultimately it's your decision as to who you advertise with. But all of them do require you to give your license number. If you are advertising on social media platforms, you must also give your license number. That's a requirement under the regulations for the Valencia community. Now, once you've done all that, you also need to register with the Guardia Seville. You'll need to do this in person. You'll need to take your license, your NIE and your passport. Um, you'll need an appointment, you can't just turn up. And they will complete some forms and give you your personal login details for registering the details of all your house guests aged 16 years and over. Now that's a legal requirement. Hotels have been doing it for years. When you arrive at a hotel, they will ask for your passports. They actually scan them. You may not realise that, but they do scan them and those details are then forwarded on to the Guardia Seville. Now, um, we do tell our guests that we're going to be doing this. We don't scan them, we enter them manually on the website. Uh, but we do tell our guests that they will have to do that. We do have a GDPR clause in our contract. and People are told, even on the booking form, that this will be done. So it's important that you tell your guests in advance that you will be requiring their passport details and that they will be registered with the Guardia Civil in accordance with Spanish law. You're going to need the services of a key holder. Now, your key holder must be somebody who's registered to work legally in Spain. It can't be a friend or a neighbour who just said, oh, I'll do it for a couple of quid. That's illegal. Your key holder should, by rights, see all your guests in, again, checking their passport details so that you can enter them into onto the uh, Guardia Seville uh, website. They um, should show them around the property, show them anything that's particularly useful to know about the property, show them where the information is, and ensure that they're happy with the property, and then they should also see them out. That's a legal requirement that you have somebody available in the case of emergencies. In years gone by, people used to post keys and that was it. Um, that, that is not acceptable practice. It never was, but a lot of people did it. So your key holder needs to be registered. It's not an expensive service, but it is worth paying um, for the services you want them to do. So meet and greet, see them out, and we actually have our property uh, checked over uh, when it's standing empty, plants watered, that sort of toilets flushed, uh, taps run, that sort of thing, uh, when the property is empty, so it's checked and looked after. Your guests um, will also need the property to be cleaned after they leave. Now, in some cases, the guests will pay the key holders direct a fixed amount. They need to know that in advance. In some cases, it's included 
in the rental but to keep your rental as competitive you may want to do that as an extra fixed charge on each stay um, because it is a fixed charge it doesn't matter whether somebody's been there for four nights or 14 nights is still going to need cleaning from top to bottom it's still going to cost the same amount you will also uh, need your key holder to wash the towels and um, the sheets and tea towels and put out new soaps um, dishcloths that sort of thing for each guest so you agree with your key holder the level of service you want if you use an agent to market your property then they will organize all that sort of thing for you but they must again be allowed to legally work in Spain and they should have a tourist license for the agency now in the past the agencies have sometimes said well we can advertise the property even though you don't have a license and using our agency number that is not allowed the property itself must have a number agents advertise using their own licensing number as an agent but the property must have a license tax you do have to pay it and if you own a property in Spain you have to pay tax in Spain on your rental income regardless of where you live now if you're a non-resident then you will do that tax return every quarter so January to March you file in the first two weeks of April and the tax is payable immediately so four tax returns a year four tax payments a year excuse me <coughs> sorry you will also need to pay your non-residence tax which is an annual payment and the taxes on the house which are your EB or SUMA equivalent council tax and your community fees um, you can do this yourself you can file all the tax returns yourself uh, but it's a lot easier if you're not in Spain to pay a small fee for somebody to do that for you and those fees instantly are deductible against the amount of tax you pay now if you live within the EU if you live within the EU then the tax you pay is 19% on the net income from your rental there are a few allowable deductions but they are limited so your tax is 19% currently at the moment we reckon that works out to about 13 to 14% on the gross now the big difference is if you don't live in an EU country and that will include all Brits after the end of the Brexit transition period and our tax will then be 24% on the gross, no allowable deductions. So you will need to take that into account when calculating your rates for rental. If you live in the UK, in fact, if you live anywhere, you will also have to declare that income in accordance with your own country's regulations. In the UK, there is a dual tax agreement between the UK and Spain, which is outside of the EU agreement, so it will continue. Um, and that means that the tax you've already paid in Spain is taken into account when calculating the amount you pay in the UK. But you still have to do a tax return in both countries. Remember, in the eyes of Spanish law, it's not how frequently you let out your property or what rate you charge as to whether it determines you need a license. It is whether you let it out at all. If you don't have a license, your friends and family can use the property, but only for free. If you charge for using your property, even mates rates, you need a license. As I said previously, the fines for not complying with the license regulations now run into tens of thousands of euros. And it's not cheap in Spain to break the law. So if you don't want to end up having to sell your house to be able to pay the fine. There are many owners who do let their properties out fully legally and um, make a small income from doing so. It is possible to do it and it needn't be stressful. What is a little bit daunting is the setting up in the first place and that's where Spanish Dream Property comes along to help you because not only will we help you find a property, we'll also help you with the registration process and recommend um, lawyers who are not attached to us in any way, who we know handle licensing applications and tax returns for owners of holiday homes um, who have very good reputations and don't charge the earth. So do contact us if you want help to find your holiday home in either South Costa Blanca or the Marmanor area of Murcia, where as I said, the regulations are different for licensing, but you still need a license. 
and uh, we'll do all we can to help you. Thank you for your time.